You've probably already guessed the inspiration for today's video, but let's start at the beginning. Now that the frost is creeping up on the windows and the snow is falling just beyond, it's time for another winter-inspired dress. This time, however, I'm pleased to tell you that this dress is part of a little collaboration. This video is, as usual, about making a dress. But if you want to see what gorgeous ideas Rachel Maxi has in mind with the set dress, you'll have to watch her video. I've been following her creative journey here on YouTube for a long time and I'm honored that somehow she's now a part of mine too. So let's get started and see what we've come up with, shall we? Coming up with the design was so much fun. Our Pinterest board was all about frosty hands, figures covered in icicles and a mood that could have come straight out of Narnia. So I tried to bring the magic of the cold into a dress. I liked the idea of a deep lake covered in layers of ice, so I went for that. I started with a simple dress in a dark blue as a base layer. The dress should represent the deep lake, so I chose a dark blue color and a white flowing skirt. I wanted this part of the dress to be wearable for other occasions, so I designed the bodice keeping that in mind. To represent the eyes on the lake, I wanted to add another layer of a sheer fabric so that the blue underneath was still visible. Then I wanted to sew on cracks of the eyes with more layers of fabric. Finally, I thought about adding more layers of the sheer fabric at the bottom to make it look like the dress was freezing from the bottom up. Starting with the pattern, I first sent out a mock-up for the bodice to make sure it actually fits. After receiving some pictures and infos about the fit, I could then make the necessary changes on the pattern. For this I had the picture right next to the pattern and changed small parts going back and forth. When I draw in the changes after a fitting, I make sure to use a different colored pen so that when I should get back to the pattern in the future, it's easier for me to understand what I did. With the correct base pattern made, I could then trace all the different pattern pieces. I labeled each piece and drew on the correct direction of the fabric. I already knew which fabric I wanted to use and since it looked slightly darker or brighter from different angles, I had to mark the right direction on the pattern. After that I cut out all the pieces and checked the correct length of each. With this pattern ready, I copied it once more to make the alterations for the lining fabric. After preparing both patterns, it was then time for the fabric. Since I wanted this dress to represent a smooth deep water, I opted for a dark blue silk satin. It looked like the silky surface of a deep lake and had a nice drape that reminded me of waves, so it was the perfect match for this project. First, I ironed the whole fabric and measured what I had left of it. Since I wanted the skirt to have as much volume as possible, I decided to cut out all the necessary pieces for it first and use the rest for the bodice. In the end, I had enough fabric for one full circle and a quarter and plenty of fabric for the bodice. The skirt parts were made by measuring the length with the measuring tape, 
Marking the right length with pins and then cutting it out while making sure to achieve a nice curve. Cutting the skirt first also means that while I cut out everything else, it can hang for a little while. This way, the parts cut out on the bias can stretch out and I can get a more even hemline in the end. Then it was time to cut out the bodice. I took all the scraps that were left from cutting the skirt, ironed them and also added some interfacing. I wanted it to have a little bit more structure than the skirt, so I went for a light interfacing. After planning how to cut out all the pieces, I started to draw them onto the fabric. I drew each piece and directly added the correct seam allowance, so that it was easier to put the pieces as close as possible together. I did this on all the pre-organized fabric pieces and then cut out everything. Then I did basically the same with the lining. I measured how much I needed, ironed it and then added interfacing as well. I wanted the lining to be the structural layer of the garment, so it had to be sturdy enough for it. And then I traced all the pattern pieces like I did on the silk before and cut out everything. The lining skirt was made the same way as the silk skirt, but with only one half circle. So after cutting I had to hang it a bit as well. With all the skirt parts hanging and all the bodice parts cut out, I could then start to assemble the dress. I usually start with a lining layer to get into the sewing and familiarize myself with the pattern. I prepare the sewing machine, put the pattern pieces together in pairs and then start to sew each pair together. This way I can access the seams easier to iron them properly and then sew the next seam. When I sewed both front and back halves, I could add the facing as well as my label in the back. And then I added the boning to each seam. Since it's a softer boning, I could do so by sewing it on. I decided to secure the top with interfacing again to make sure nothing is visible from the outside later. Then it was time to sew the outside top. This worked basically the same, only with longer panels and no facing. Again I always put two pattern pieces together to sew them in pairs first. Then, when the seams are pressed properly, I put them together in pairs again and sewed them together. I did this until I had the full bodice assembled. After that, I decided to sew the lining skirt. I worked with this kind of lining enough times to know that the time it could hang was more than enough. So the first step here was to sew the half circle to the waistband.
Then I close the center back. On the top with a white stitch and on the bottom with a smaller one. After ironing the seam open and removing the wider stitch, I sewed a small fabric patch onto the bottom of the opening. This will later give a nice finish to the zipper. Then I could sew the skirt to the bodice and sew the hem. The last big part on this dress was then to sew the silk skirt. After closing the side seams, I sewed this skirt to a waistband as well and directly added it to the bodice. Then I closed the back seam, a white stitch where the zipper will be and a smaller stitch down to the hem. With the zipper added and the lining sewn inside, I could work on the hem of the dress. Since the skirt stretched a lot at some places, I used a laser, usually used for hanging pictures, to even out the length of the skirt. Then I added a bias tape to the whole circumference. This got ironed carefully and provided an even hem without any visible seams. Now I only had to finish parts like the arm side and center back by hand. And then it was finally time for the eyes dress. For the fabric I had a very thin silk chiffon or white tulle and while I really wanted to use the silk because it felt so nice, I decided to use the tulle because I preferred how the blue was visible under it. From here on I just went for it without real plan, so let's see how it turned out. The only thing that was set was the neckline. So I drew the outlines of it onto the tulle and cut it out of one layer. To make sure it won't stretch before finishing it, I ironed a small strip of interfacing onto it. And then I could shape the whole two thing to the bodice. I wanted the dress to only show ice cracks and no regular darts. So I had to pin the tool around the bodice and create the right shape this way. Once I got one side pinned, I sewed along those pins and then continued on the other side. I did the same on the back. Then I pressed the seams as weird as possible to create small layers of tulle around the sewn lines. Those layers are then secured by hand. Then I experimented with some blue tulle and again ironed it to get a lot of crisp irregular lines. Those light blue scraps are then pinned under the white tool layers, matching the pattern that was sewn before.
Then I secured them by simply sewing over everything from the outside, adding smaller cracks this way. Then I secured the loose ends and marked on the till layers important parts like the waist and side seam to make sure I know how it fits around the underdress. This is so that I can now pin front and back together and sew the side seams using French seams. So first I sewed the seams right sides facing out. Cut away the seam allowance and turned everything inside out to sew it again. The godets at the bottom were circles and half circles, added the same way as the darts at the bodice. Then I finished the neckline by sewing a small tool strip onto it and finished it by hand. This way there's no seam visible through the tool. The last steps were then to finish the armhole and to sew on some hooks to the back opening. I cut earlier and finished the same way as the neckline. It was so strange to work on this project. While the first part felt very familiar and working with this beautiful silk was amazing, the second part was completely the opposite of what I'm used to do. Usually I plan everything very precisely, but this time I just went for it and I'm really happy I did. While in the beginning I was a bit hesitant, now the ice parts are my favorite detail about this dress. I think it's so nice how such a simple technique can create this effect. Usually I would end this kind of video with trying on the dress and presenting it in a different way, showing how it looks on a body and in movement. But this time we are ending the video with putting the dress in a box sending it around the world for someone else to wear it for the first time. If you are curious about this, you can click here to watch Rachel's video. And if you like watching this video, feel free to like it or subscribe to my channel. Until next time.